Instruments you've never heard of that sound unbelievable. Let's take a look at the top 15 most rare instruments. Number 15. Pyrophone. While most instruments you'll be familiar with rely on the use of air, strings, or being hit to produce sounds, there are some that work in a completely different way. Possibly the most visually impressive is the pyrophone because this is an instrument that uses combustion to create its tones. The first is thought to have been built around 1870 and involved the burning of hydrogen within glass tubes. As each tube is a different size and length, the pitch generated by the explosion can be varied and offers just as wide a range as outputs as any other instrument. Nowadays, pyrophones remain very rare, not the least because they pose a fire hazard to wherever they are installed, most are powered by propane, but there are some mobile versions powered by gasoline that can be attached to vehicles. It's also possible to create different colors in the flames with the addition of chemical agents, which certainly leads to a spectacular display, if not the greatest sounding music. Number 14. Santur Originating in Iran and Mesopotamia, the santur is a type of stringed percussion instrument, which is usually placed on the floor with the musicians sat behind it. Although versions exist that can be worn with straps around the neck, it's played by using two oval-shaped mallets called mezrabs, and is usually made up of two sets of nine bridges which have strings set across them. These strings on the right-hand side are made from brass or copper, and those on the left are made from steel and gives it a total range of around three octaves. The santura is a traditional instrument that's been part of the Mesopotamian culture for thousands of years and is thought to have been the predecessor to the harp, the Chinese yanking, and the harpsichord. Today, you'll still see them being played in Iraq and Iran, but it's very unusual to see one further afield apart from in specialist collections. Number 13. Hurdy-Gurdy The hurdy-gurdy is an unusual stringed instrument where the sound is created by turning a handle that rotates a wheel against the strings. In essence, the wheel acts as a bow and the musician uses the wooden keyboard to change the pitch. When playing a single note on a hurdy-gurdy, you might mistake it for a violin. But when it's playing more complex tunes, the differences become much clearer. Most also have drone strings that accompany the melody with a constant tone, and this makes it sound similar to bagpipes, so much so that the two instruments are often seen as being interchangeable. It's thought hurdy-gurdies originated in the 11th century, and they became very popular during the Renaissance period. Towards the end of the 17th century, however, tastes in music were beginning to change and instruments that had the capability to produce sharper and clearer tones became more in demand, leaving the hurdy-gurdy to become an instrument of the lower classes. Modern versions do exist, and you can even get an electric hurdy-gurdy that has no strings, but the medieval sound means that in contemporary music there's very little place for an instrument like it. Number 12. Octo Contra Alto Clarinet Clarinets are one of the most recognizable instruments, having played a prominent role in orchestras since the late 18th century. Like many instruments, though, there are various different versions, and some are much rarer than others. The second largest of them all is known as the Octo Contra Alto Clarinet, and there is only thought to be just one of them in existence. While a normal soprano clarinet is pitched in B flat, the Octo Contra Alto is pitched in E flat and has a much deeper tone, meaning that it's two octaves and a fifth lower. Of course, one of the reasons you'll never see the instrument is that there's very little music that's actually been written for it. There are only three known pieces, each of which were written by a Norwegian composer, Kolterje Lerstad, and there are no full recordings of them being played. 
The wavelength of these vibrations created by the instrument means that it can only be played in a large room to be heard properly. And unless you have incredible speakers on your computer, it's almost impossible to get an impression of what it actually sounds like in real life without being there in person. Number 11. Hardanger Fiddle The Hardanger Fiddle is a traditional instrument from Norway. And while on the surface it may look like a highly decorated violin, there are a number of differences that make it something very unique. Instead of having four strings like a violin, they have eight or nine four of which are plucked or bowed in the normal way, with a further four or five sympathetic strings that vibrate when the main four are being played. The earliest known use of a Hardanger fiddle dates back to 1651, although the original design was much rounder and more narrow, and it was only in the 19th century that they were made in a more similar way to a violin, although with thinner wood. Pieces of bone are often used to make the pegs and the edges, and there's usually a carved dragon, lion, or a woman as part of the scroll. Black ink is used to make the other markings, known as rosing, and they are tuned in the note of D, meaning it's a transposing instrument. In recent years, they have become more popular around the world, particularly in Japan, but it's still very unlikely to see one being played unless you're at a folk or cultural performance. Number 10. Kajon Originating in Peru, the cajon is a percussion instrument that's made from wood. It's a box shape, which means the musician can sit on and is played by slapping the faces with the hands or brushes and sticks. The impacts create a sound inside, and there's a sound hole on the rear side for it to echo out of. Traditionally, they were simply wooden boxes, but now alternative versions are made that include stretched cords across the top panel, which creates a snare-like effect. The first records of cajons being used date back to the 16th century, and they were invented by slaves who had very little else with which to create music. By the time slavery ended on the continent, the instruments had become an integral part of the musical landscape and continued to be synonymous with traditional Peruvian and Spanish performances. Number 9. Hydrolophone Hydrolophone is the term given to an instrument where the sound is created by the use of water. Inventors have come up with ingenious designs for how this can be done, ranging from iron bowls of different sizes that are full of water that the musician slaps with their hands on top of, to ones that work in the same way as most woodwind instruments, but instead of using air to create the sound, use water. In 1980, Steve Mann, a lecturer from the University of Toronto, devised a hydrolophone which was made from a curved tube with which water is pumped into and spurts out through a series of small holes. Each hole has a sound mechanism in it, and by covering it with your finger, the water moves on to the next one. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Stick Dulcimer Stringed instruments can take years and years to learn to play well, but this doesn't always have to be the case. The stick dulcimer is generally seen as one of the easiest to pick up, and with some practice, you'll soon be able to perform a decent tune. Inspired by Egyptian long neck lutes, they are made from lightweight wood and have only three strings. All three are strummed together and are usually tuned to a D, an A, and a D, something that's known as mixolydian tuning. Looking like a small guitar with a long neck, the fretboard opens up into the sound box and they're held in the same way as a guitar, but are designed to be much easier to play because with a diatonic scale and three strings, it means that no matter what notes you'll strum, it'll sound good. Number 7. C Organ Usually, when someone designs an instrument, the intent is for them to be mass-produced so plenty of people can learn to play them. But occasionally, someone builds such a unique idea that only one is ever made. And in the case of the C organ, it can even play itself. It was installed in the Croatian seaside town of Zadar. And while it's similar to ones in San Francisco, California and Blackpool, England, it's truly unique. As you walk down the large white steps towards the water, you may not think there's anything unusual there, but you'll soon begin to hear the sounds being produced by the 35 tubes and resonating cavity that are beneath. 
Small holes in the steps allow the sound to project out, with the volume and pitch fully dependent on the power of the waves. The music being played will therefore never quite be the same, but is created continuously and isn't reliant on someone to operate it. Number 6. Balalaika Russia is known for its rich musical heritage, but one of the more unusual instruments that were designed in the country is the balalaika. Around since at least 1688, it's noticeably similar to a guitar, but with some obvious differences. First is that it's triangular in shape and there are three strings instead of four. Normally, two of the strings are tuned to the same note, with the third tuned to a perfect fourth higher, and can be used to play both melodies and chords. They're often used in Russian folk music and dances, but they aren't commonly seen outside of the country. The balalaika is therefore seen as one of the main instruments that represent Russian culture, and will be seen at events that showcase it. During the opening performance of one of the semi-finals of the Eurovision Song Contest in 2009, for example, Alexei Arapovsky, who is seen as one of the leading modern balalaika players, performed a solo because organizers wanted an event to have an increased Russian feel to it. Balalaikas come in a range of different sizes, from the smallest and highest pitch, the descant balalaika, which is 18 inches long, to the largest and lowest pitched, the contrabass balalaika, which is up to 65 inches long. They're all played with either the fingers or a pick, and there are even some balalaika orchestras where traditional classical music is arranged to be played using just the various forms of the instrument. Number 5. Hung The hung is a type of idiophone instrument, which means that it produces sound by vibrating itself rather than using strings, winds, or membranes, or any other secondary method. The UFO-like shape is made by combining two half-shells of nitrided steel which are glued together. It's hollow inside and the notes are hammered into it during the manufacturing process. They are designed so the top, known as the ding, produces one note while there are seven or eight tone fields around the surface, and one consistent note across the bass section, which is known as the gu. The hung is very similar to the steel pan, but was only developed recently, so it took modern manufacturing and harmonic methods into account to produce something unique. Development on the instrument began in the year 2000, with the first version going on sale in 2001. They were only made in one small workshop in Bern, Germany, but were offered in 45 different sound models. Production of hungs was ended in 2013 when the manufacturers turned their attentions to a different instrument, but as they are still trademarked, no one else is allowed to make them. There are therefore severely limited numbers in the world, and unless the owner is willing to part ways with theirs, they are virtually impossible to get a hold of, and can cost up to $10,000. Number 4. Chapman Stick in the late 1960s and early 70s, musicians were experimenting with a wide range of instruments, and this led to the development of the Chapman stick. Closely related to the guitar, it has 8, 10, or 12 strings that are individually tuned and can be used to play melodies, bass lines, chords, or textures. They essentially look like a wide guitar fretboard but instead of plucking the strings to make sound, you tap and fret them. Because both hands are freed up to do this, the Chapman stick can be used to play a number of different notes at once, far more than is possible with other stringed instruments. Accomplished musicians can even play bass, chords, and melodies all at the same time. Since the introduction of the first wooden versions, there are now plastic and electric ones too, with eight different recognized designs that range from between 34 and 36 inches long. The strings can be tuned to the player's style, and will tend to be higher if it's being used as the lead instrument, and lower if it's a support instrument. There are also alternative ways to play and hold them. While traditionally they're held on a shoulder strap and belt hook, they can be played in a seated position too, and some people even bow them to produce a completely different sound altogether. Number 3. Glass Armonica if you've ever run a wet finger around the rim of a wine glass to create a sound, then you'll be more than familiar with the way that a glass harmonica works. 
but rather than being something you awkwardly play at a dinner table, a glass harmonica takes the principle to a whole new level. Technically known as a friction idiophone because the sound is produced by the friction of your hands on the glass, the phenomena behind the way the sound is produced has been studied for hundreds of years. Benjamin Franklin even designed his own glass harmonica, which involved mounting 37 bowls horizontally on an iron spindle, which would rotate and the performers simply had to put their finger on the particular note they want. Subsequent designs included keyboards and the use of violin bows on the bowls. And there are more than a hundred works that have been created specifically for a glass harmonica by renowned composers. At times during the 19th century, they were extremely popular because of their ethereal sounds, but amidst rumors that the instruments would make their players and audiences go mad, they became far less common. Now they're used as a novelty rather than a main instrument, and it's very rare to see one being played. Most that survive from the instrument's heyday are now in museums around the world. Number 2. Pipa the pipa is a stringed instrument from China that has its origins at at least as long ago as the 2nd century AD. Also known as a Chinese lute, the main wooden body is pear-shaped, which leads to a thin neck. They have four strings in between 12 to 26 frets and are designed to be plucked. They have long been an integral part of traditional Chinese music and there are a number of playing techniques that can be used to create various sounds. The left hand is crucial in producing vibrato, pizzicato, and harmonics like in other stringed instruments, and string bending can be used to create a glissando, usually because the frets are so high the fingers never touch in between them, which is a technique commonly used in Western instruments for pitch changing effects. You can also slap the instrument for a percussive effect and twist the strings for a cymbal-like effect, meaning a well-trained musician can produce a wealth of sound from just one instrument. In recent times, electric pipas have been designed with the same techniques used to make an electric guitar, while a contemporary form of the instrument with five strings was created 20 years ago that has become popular in Korea. While you'll almost certainly see traditional pipas being played while you're in China, they're far more rare elsewhere in the world despite there being attempts to incorporate them into jazz and other forms of Western music. Number 1. Musical Road It's not unusual for instruments to be created for a specific purpose. After all, most of those in an orchestra were designed to add certain sounds and pitches that composers needed for their works. But in 2008, Honda developed something for their new advertising campaign a road that plays a tune as you drive along it. Known as the Civic Musical Road, it's on Avenue G in Lancaster, California. Along the tarmac are a series of grooves which, if you drive at a steady speed of 55 miles per hour, will play the finale of Rossini's William Tell Overture. uses a technique called tactile vibration to generate the notes as you drive over them. And the music can be heard inside the car as well as in the surrounding area. It's not the only musical road in the world, however, as there are also similar ones in Denmark, Hungary, Indonesia, Japan, and Mexico. Not only do they add some entertainment to drivers and passengers, but they're also used to help limit speeding, because they only properly work if you travel along them at the set speed. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.